All right, everybody. How you all doing? I uh, just wanted to give you a little update here on where we're at. Um, as you can see, I fitted a uh, preamp tube in here. And after a whole lot of uh, experimenting and a whole lot of uh, working things out, I got it exactly how I want it. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'll just want to play this amp for you. Um, forgive me, I have the knob off here. It doesn't fit right. I have to open the hole up a little bigger. But everything, is, this, this amp's been burning in for about an hour right now. It's not red plating. Everything seems to be good. Sound is really nice and clear um, in spite of the washer and dryer running in the background. But let's, uh, let's turn this thing on and see what it sounds like, okay? You can see I got my little minimum sevens here. Right there. And I'm just using my little MP3 player up here, see? A little test unit. And you can see I've, I've got plenty of gain now. So anyhow, you get the point. Uh, it's working really, really well. It sounds fantastic. I'm thrilled. Uh, let me get this cleaned off here, and let me get the schematic put back up on the bench here, and I'll go over with you some of the changes that I had to make to get it how I wanted it. And then I want to have a little, uh, we'll do a little talk about how we do global negative feedback and how we can adjust this and get it set right on your amplifier. That's a real challenge to do this, and no matter how much calculating uh, you do, it still helps you to just go through and uh, do a little bit of experimenting. So we'll go over that a little bit, and we'll talk a little bit about the final design that I settled on for this uh, preamp. This is actually a 12AX7, but I have it set up to be lower gain. And the reason I used that is the 12AU7 just didn't have the noise uh, characteristics and gain characteristics that I really wanted for this. Even though it was lower gain, you would think it would be a quieter tube, but uh, this 12AX7 just worked out fantastic for what we want. So we'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, let me finish testing this amp for a little while longer, and then I'm going to come back and clear the deck, and we'll put some schematics up, and we can go over some of the things that we've done uh, to get this to where it is today. By the way guys, I just uh, want to ask your forgiveness for the music that I chose. Um, I tried to get something here that is uh, public domain, that's not copyrighted. I downloaded it from the YouTube uh, the freebie you know, library and uh, so I think it had a lot of different sounds in it. Um, of course it's not the music we all like to listen to but it got the purpose done for us so anyhow just want to let you know on that 
Okay, I'm back. So let me see if I can get some lighting on this. Make it a little bit easier to see. Sometimes this light makes it better and sometimes it makes the, the camera over adjust and it makes it darker. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see on the screen of the camera so don't always know how I'm doing. But anyhow, so here is kind of a little modification. This is our sheet we used for our little tutorial on our little preamp. And this is the design I ended up using for the amp that I have. This is Now this is one channel. I used a 12AX7 and I did this twice, so one for each channel. Um, on the plate, I ended up sticking with a 100K resistor. I did not use a bypass capacitor because I didn't need all that extra gain. I used a 4.7K resistor for my cathode. And the reason for that is I wanted to reduce my gain. Now I adjusted this until I put about 150 millivolt signal sine wave on the input and I tried it at you know 40 cycles, one kilocycle, you know 40 hertz, one kilohertz and 10 kilohertz and made sure it was flat the whole way through and <clears throat> adjusted this until at the output of the amplifier I was just put driving the amp into clipping. Um, so that's the first thing we did. Then basically I have a one mag resistor just like this and at the input of this I have my uh, I have a 100k pot. So basically I just took a normal 100k pot and uh, of course you know when you turn the volume down it takes takes the center tap to ground and when you turn it all the way up it brings it to the input socket. So that's all that is very simple. And I did away with the that uh, tone, con the loudness contour altogether because I didn't have a center tapped pot that was 100K, and that 100K worked really well, as you could hear. So it's very simple. That's it. Two resistor values we had to worry about: 100K and 4.7K, and a one meg. There's your three resistors, and then I ended up going with a 0 0.01 on the input and a 0 0.047 on the output. And that gave me the frequency response that I needed, kept the voltage where I needed it, kept everything from you know oscillating, feeding back, whatever. Uh, worked out good. Now, on to the amplifier itself. We did have to make some modifications to the amp. Okay, So right now this is 47K like we originally started out as. This ended up being an 830 ohm resistor is where we really wanted to be. Um, the only resistors I had on hand and I used was this, which ended up being, if you could see, uh, is an 800 ohm. So right here, this is 800 ohms actually, and it really would have been a little bit. Uh, been in a little more of its happy zone if I brought this up to 830. But since I'm not driving this tube into anywhere near clipping on either side, this really didn't matter. So biasing this a little bit, you know, just a little bit hotter, didn't matter. The rest of this stayed pretty much the same. Uh, what I did notice is I had a little bit too much bias on here. It was a little too hot. So I added and this is kind of a no-no, but I basically lifted the ground lead from where all these come together and added another 47 ohm resistor to ground. And that just kind of floated these guys up a little higher. Um, biased them a little bit cooler, and it was just enough to take the edge off. Now these capacitors I did not bypass all the way to here. I left them as they are here. And again, that's kind of a no-no, but from a sound standpoint and how it tracked, um, across the frequency spectrum. Uh, it, I really was happy with it, so I think I'm just going to leave that like that. Now, where we really get into a little bit of a challenge is here with our feedback. Okay, uh, I didn't need my coil anymore. It stopped oscillating. Uh, so anyhow, we didn't have any oscillation. I just kind of bypassed this and it was happy. And 
this ended up being a 4.5k not 4.7 I tried a 4.7 and I still was getting some distortion before I was getting you know right up around the clipping with this 4.5 it was just perfect how did I do that well let me show you so so I took a 10k pot took this wire put it onto this pot from here to here fired up the amp and I started with 10k in there I ran the amp up and I started bringing this down okay I ran it up into clipping brought this down and then I just kind of waited till it you know till the clipping and everything kind of fell into place um, you have to fiddle around with it this is a moving target every time you change this you change if you look remember this over here is a very low DC resistance okay so let's let's figure this on being you know less than an ohm so I have whatever this is plus one ohm shunted across here with respect to ground because remember your output of your output transformer is grounded okay I kind of clipped it off when I printed it here but this goes to ground so essentially whatever you have here is going in series in parallel with here which is changing your bias here so whatever even if you mess with this number it's going to mess with this number it's a moving target um, you can sit there and calculate all you want but <laughs> it's not going to work until you test it you have to test it and you have to try some different values and the easiest way I've ever found to do it is using a pot and uh, injecting a signal a known signal um, I balanced this whole thing around 150 millivolts why 150 millivolts these cheap little Chinese mp3 players and your cell phones and all these things uh, 150 millivolts peak to peak is a pretty good line level for them so basically I wanted this amp to perform around that type of thing now if I were going to use uh, some of the line level devices from old uh, high-end audio equipment of course that would be too low it'd be too much gain but for what we're doing it works out perfectly so again this settled right at 4.5k and not no less no more uh, you go more than this it just it just brings too much feedback in there and it just lowers all of this too much um, you don't want that uh, and you know conversely if you went even to 4.7k you would start to get a little bit of distortion so it's it's very critical believe it or not and you can't really do this should be the very last thing you do and it was the very last thing I did I did most of my tests with no feedback connected at all I left this wire disconnected okay I just disconnected it over here at the speaker terminal and then got everything to work got everything to look good then I went back and added my feedback and then I adjusted things from there um, again it's a moving target but once you zero in on it you'll see it and you will get really good sound um, now most of you uh, if you're working on an amp that's already put together and already working it's a lot easier to mess with your feedback and and again feedback for a guitar amplifier is going to be a lot less than feedback on an audio you know music amplifier uh, guitar amps you really don't want more than about 6 db of feedback um, because you want distortion you want the amp to break up whereas you want the opposite to happen with these you want it to stay clean all the way to its maximum power by the way when I finish this out I'm getting roughly about 12 watts of output RMS which is really good for these little tubes they run a little bit hot but uh, they're not red plating we're not having any problems with that um, I, that 47 ohm did make a difference though it still didn't red plate without that but it was just running too hot so there we are um, that's the update and again this feedback resistor remember this affects the impedance of this whole circuit so 
this is really kind of an important thing. And it's not easy to calculate mathematically. Um, I've never had any luck doing it. Um, I've tried values that I've calculated and they've worked, but then I've moved that value up or down and usually I'm able to get it even better. So really using the variable resistor method for this to me is the best way to do it. And you'll see, you know, if you, if you bring too much global feedback, it'll just snuff this right out. And if you don't get enough, you'll see distortion um, on your output. So again, you'll, you'll just hit that one spot where everything kind of cleans up and that's what you're looking for. So anyhow, I hope this uh, helps you guys out a little bit and uh, I guess we're on to our next little project after this one because I'm going to call this amp finished. I put it all together, put the covers on it, and uh, I think it's going to go up on my computer desk and be my computer amplifier. All right. You guys have a great day. I uh, hope you learned something. I know I sure learned a ton off this whole project. And uh, that's going to end the series on the scratch-built stereo amplifier. Again, if you were using... Uh, you know, a preamp like I did on the last video, um, you didn't need this, okay? But again, by adding this in there, it changed some things over here, and obviously we had to make some adjustments. So, there you go. Um, good luck if you guys decide to build one, and uh, if you do, I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, Give us some comments and uh, see how your projects turn out. All right, thanks a lot. Till next time, give us a thumbs up if you liked it, and uh, more to come.